Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. We're going to do Isaiah chapter 11. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem, the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Who is Jesse? Jesse was the father of King David. That was the line that Christ came from. In a previous study in Isaiah, I showed everybody where Jesus said he was the root and the offspring of David. So, a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. This is another messianic prophecy, people. Verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Now, let me stop here. And, uh, you know, in verse 6, they say, Oh, the Mandela effect. Satan built a time machine, and he went back in time, and he changed the Bible. It, it didn't say wolf. It used to say lion and the lamb. Well, guess what, people? Uh, the Lion and the Lamb were some lyrics of a, of a so-called gospel-type song that was sung by Elvis Presley, I believe, on the Ed Sullivan Show back in the 60s. And then all your TV preachers back then started quoting from that, from popular culture, Well, the lion's going to lay down with the lamb. Praise a Jesus. Well, guess what? And then everybody remembers the lion and the lamb. And then they say, oh, well, the Bible's changed. No, no, no. You didn't read it from the Bible. You got it from Elvis Presley, along with everybody else that incorporated that into their sermons. They didn't get that from the Bible. They got it from Elvis Presley. And before Elvis made that song popular, somebody else sang it. Sorry, Satan didn't build a time machine and go back in time and change the word of God. Because if he did, that means the, the Satan's more powerful than God. And God was too weak to stop it from happening. So if you fall for this Mandela effect, go for it. Just don't come to my channel and start telling everybody this stuff because I'll delete it and block it, block you because you're an idiot. Bible's always said the wolf and the lamb. And the wolf does uh, dwell with the lamb. Just go to any denominational church. Look up at the altar, the preacher, you'll see the wolf. Look in the congregation and you'll see a few lambs with a lot of goats mixed in there. A lot of goats. So, Verse 7, And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw 
like the ox. You see, people, until you see a lion eating straw like an ox, you know that the end times has not happened yet. Okay? All these people that think that Christ's kingdom is right now, well, they're idiots. What can I tell you? Verse 8. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. What's an asp? A very dangerous and venomous snake. A very dangerous snake. Supposedly it was an asp that uh, Cleopatra put to her chest to uh, kill herself so she wouldn't be caught by the Roman army. I don't know if I would rather be killed by the poison or venom of a snake or the Roman army. I think the snake would be more pleasant. So what's this deal about the suckling child? Now, remember, the lion's going to eat straw like an ox. And a, a child's going to be playing by the hole of a poisonous, well, venomous snake. Uh, and it says, And the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Now, if this is the kingdom, and animals are all eating straw, where are these children coming from? Well, Matthew 22. The Sadducees came to Jesus and asked him a question. Now, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. They said, okay, this woman had a husband. He died, and then she married his brother, and he died, and then married another brother, and he died, and then, you know, this went on for seven times. So this woman had seven husbands. And then she died. Well, Jesus, in the resurrection, whose, whose wife is she going to be? They thought they were going to trick Jesus. So let's read that. Verse 28. Matthew 22, verse 28. They said, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, you, Ye do err. That's where you get the word error from. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry, nor are given a marry. I'm sorry, nor are given in marriage. For in the resurrection, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. And just remember something. Um, when people try to tell you that Genesis 6, the sons of God were not fallen angels, they'll always quote this verse, but they'll leave out the last two words. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God. But they leave out the words in heaven. Guess what? Not all the angels of God are in he well are in heaven. Some of them were cast out of heaven, remember? Oh, yeah. So, where do these children come from if there's no marriage in heaven? Well, this is the Bob theory. You know all those children that were aborted? Children that died in childbirth? Children that died at a very young age after they were born? Why not? Why not? Would why not? Would would uh, the Lord not allow them to live? Wouldn't He give them a a chance to live and to grow up in the kingdom in the thousand year reign of Christ during the millennium? I think so. So if people aren't getting married and having children, where do these children come from in the kingdom? Lions are eating straw. Well, they're probably going to get, you know bodies, uh, children that died in childbirth, abortion, and they'll get a chance to grow up without Satan for a thousand years. That's the Bob theory. So, verse 8, 
Isaiah 11. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Uh, cockatrice is a type of snake. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Has that happened? Not my, not my knowledge. Verse 10. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of, the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the isles of the sea. God's going to recover the remnant of his people from the isles of the sea. Huh, is that England, Scotland, Ireland, Greece, Iceland, Greenland? Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Did you know there's people that are uh, think that the earth is a flat earth square? Because, hey, four corners of the earth. Um, what about north, south, east, west? I don't know. I hate arguing over flat earth. I really do. Did Jesus say, believe on the flat earth and me and thou shalt be saved? No. Did he say, believe on the round earth and believe on me and thou shalt be saved? No. Did Jesus say, believe on the four corners of the earth and believe on me and thou shalt be saved? No. Verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Now remember, Ephraim was the uh, main tribe of northern Israel. Israel and Judah split. Verse 14, But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it with the seven streams, and shall make men go over dry shod. And there shall be an, an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. All right, people, that's the end of this Bible study and lesson. All blessings, praise, glory, honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All glory and honor to them. In Jesus' name, amen.